Hi, this is John Harrop of Flying Frog Consultancy Limited. I'm the author of the book Objective Camel for Scientists, and I'm interested in translating the book to Microsoft's new language F Sharp, which I'm going to be talking about today. So this is a quick teaching on the use of the F Sharp interactive mode, which lets you, uh, like the Camel top level type code in in real time, you can use the integrated development environment to uh, take pieces of code from your existing programs put them into it and use it for testing and use it for type throwback and so on and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do is fire up Visual Studio 2005. Uh, this is Microsoft's integrated development environment. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, inventing a new project. Uh, so I go File, New Project. Uh, this is going to be an F-sharp project uh, and I'll change the name of it to Empty. Uh, click on OK and you've got a, a new solution called Empty with a project in it. So right click on there and say uh, add uh, a new item and we're going to add a new um, F sharp script file. So that's the default here and the name it's been given is script1.fsx. So we click add to get that. Uh, this starts off with um, an example script file in there, so I'm just going to delete that and start from a clean slate. Uh, but just below uh, we have the F-sharp interactive mode. Now to get this interactive mode you have to have gone onto the tools menu and clicked on the add-in manager. And once you've clicked on the add-in manager uh, you can select the F-sharp interactive mode. So here it's already selected uh, and I've said that I want it to uh, start up uh, when Visual Studio starts up. So Here's our script file, and if we click down here on the interactive mode, then we can actually type directly into here. So, for example, one, two, three, uh, expressions end in semicolons, uh, and we get the number one, two, three back again. We can type in simple mathematical expressions like one plus two times three, and we get the answer seven. And we can uh, define variables in context of something. So we can say, for example, let x equals 2 uh, and have that valid in the context of the above expression, but having 1 plus x times 3 instead. And here again, it evaluates to 7, as you would expect. So with a very similar notation, we can write um, let, for example, a function name. So let's say sqr. Uh, of uh, an argument, let's say n, um, equal n times n. Uh, so this is the square function. It takes uh, an argument called n, returns n multiplied by itself. Uh, and the um, F-sharp interactive mode infers the type of that function to be int goes to int. So this means the function accepts a single argument of type int, and the, the return value of the function is itself of type int. So we can test this by typing sqr5 uh, to see what 5 squared is, and sure enough we find that 5 squared is 25, as you would expect. So we can use this uh, to generalize this slightly. We can write a power function. So we're going to write a recursive power function that simply takes x to the power y and reduces it to x times x to the power of y minus 1. So we start off with let rec. Uh, then we say our function name is going to be pal. Uh, we call our arguments x and y, but in this case we're going to have uh, y raised to the power of x, and you'll see why in a moment. So if we do, if the exponent x is equal to 0, then the answer is going to be 1. Anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. Otherwise, we're going to say return y multiplied by the power of x minus 1 and y. The two semicolons again. And the inferred type of this function is int goes to int goes to int. Now, what this actually means is the function accepts uh, an argument of type int, and it returns a function of type int goes to int. So this is called a curried function in the context of functional programming languages. So this is a function that's returning another function as its return value. So for example, uh, to call this function, we can compute 5 squared and get 25. 
Now we can also rewrite our SQR function that squares its argument uh, in terms of the power function by applying only the first argument too. So here we do let SQR equal power 2. Now the first argument 2 is the exponent. We apply that to power and we get our return value which is of type int goes to int. So this expression pow2 is going to return a function and that function we're going to assign to SQR. We're going to bind to SQ the value of the variable SQR. So we do that and indeed the type is inferred to be correct. We can type SQR5 uh, to get the um, square of 5 using our new square function and sure enough we get 25 again as you would expect. But now we've factored out the functionality of raising to the power into a function called pow that's curried uh, we can use it easily to create a, a function called cube. So we simply do pow3 to get raised to the power of 3 and our function cube uh, will raise its argument to the power of 3. So we can write cube of 5 for example will give us 5 raised to the power of 3. Now we can do more sophisticated examples and in which case it's beneficial rather than to toy around with the F-sharp interactive level directly, we can type it into our script file that, that we created earlier. So in this case we're going to create a Fibonacci function and we're going to use another feature of F-sharp which uh, isn't common in other programming languages uh, and that's pattern matching and the pattern match in this case is introduced by a keyword called function. So we're going to do let rec fib equals function. Now function is a pattern match over an implicit argument so we say 0 or 1, which means if the argument given to the fib function is either 0 or 1, then this pattern match case is going to be the one that gets evaluated. Uh, we're going to bind the value that we were passed, whether it be a 0 or a 1, to the variable name n. And in this case, we're simply going to return n. Now in the next case, we pick up on any other number, uh, again we're going to call it n, and we're going to return the fib of n minus 1 plus the fib of n minus 2. So here we have an F-sharp function, it's written in a script file. Uh, if we move the mouse, then we can move the mouse over different sub-expressions within our program and we'll get immediate throwback on the types and names of these values. So for example, the function fib, uh, we get val fib colon int goes to int, which indicates that although we haven't even compiled the project yet, Visual Studio has worked out that the type of this function is int goes to int, so it's accepting an integer argument and it's returning an integer expression. Now, we can take advantage of our running F-sharp interactive window by selecting the function that we want to evaluate in the interactive window in the script file at the top. And then if we press Alt and Enter, then the function gets pasted into the F-sharp interactive window at the bottom. Now, as you can see, that is aware of a function int goes to int that's called fib. So now we can type fib of 35 for example, to get the 35th Fibonacci number, semicolon, semicolon again, uh, and this will very quickly give us the answer, which is a value in excess of 9 million. So it's interesting to note that this achieves performance competitive with conventional compiled languages, uh, like Java for example, whilst also being safe. Uh, but it keeps complete interoperability with the whole of .NET. So, for example, we can use it to write DirectX programs using Manage DirectX. We can pull in loads of different libraries that are available through DirectX, uh, through .NET. Sorry, um, and these will be the topics of future tutorials by us from Flying Frog Consultancy Limited. So, hopefully, you'll come back and watch more tutorials from us. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy playing with the F# -sharp interactive mode.